Hi guys, this is Angela from the London Art Brewery. Um, in the previous episode, we did a whistle stop tour of setting constraints in the design file of your Dice app. Now, in this episode, I just wanted to dive a little bit deeper into auto layout and setting constraints, just so that we can get a better understanding of exactly how constraint logic works and how it affects the layout and positioning of your interface elements. So if we take a uh, screen, iPhone screen, I am horrendous at drawing rectangles, so please don't judge. And uh, so we've got this iPhone design screen and in the middle we're going to put a uh, icon or some sort of logo. And in order to set the constraints for it, you have to consider one of two things. W one thing is that how do you want this design to change? So for example, when this app is launched on, say, uh, the iPhone 6 Plus, where the screen size is much bigger, do you want the central design to be scaled proportionally or do you want it to remain the same? So this is important because it defines how you're going to set the constraints. If you wanted this to remain the same size, but stay in the same position, um, then what you would do is you would set the alignment. So set it to be uh, in the vertical center of the screen and also set the alignment to be in the horizontal center of the screen. But this alone is not enough information for Xcode to determine how to render this on different screen sizes because you haven't defined what the size of this will be. Because, you know, the alignment rules will work even if you had a design that was this size. It would still be in the horizontal and vertical centers of the screen. So what you also want to provide is the height uh, constraint and the width constraint. Now you give Xcode enough information in order to render this on all screen sizes and also in landscape mode because it will pin the height and the width to this in all cases and then position it in the center. So for example on this bigger screen it would keep it the same size and it would just place it in the middle. However, if this is not what you want and you want it to become um, scaled up proportionally to the uh, screen size, then you want to try a different way of uh, laying out your design. So in this case, you would actually pin the design to the top, um, the right, the left and the bottom edges. So what you're setting here is a constant distance between say the bottom of the uh, logo and the bottom of the screen. Say if this was 20 pixels and this was 10, this was 20 and 10, then you are telling Xcode that this distance should always remain the same. So when this is rendered onto a larger screen size, then it would keep this uh, distance to be 20, this one to be 10, uh, this one to be 10 and this one to be 20 and you would have the same proportions of your design but it would be stretched bigger um, in proportion to the increase in the size of the screen. So another common case is when we have something that needs to be laid out right at the top of the screen. So say for example if we've got um, some sort of title for our screen. Um, so if it were at the top, then the usual way that you would go about setting your constraints is by pinning this to the top, to the left and to the right. And then Xcode has enough information in order to determine the horizontal position and size of this design because it knows that say if this was 10 pixels from the screen, uh, from the left of the screen, 10 pixels from the right of the screen, and the total screen size was, uh, say, 50 pixels, then it knows that the width of this can only be 30 pixels, and it would calculate that and render it 
as uh, it should be. However, it does not know the height of this element because you've only set the pin to top. So say if this was 10 pixels from the top, it does not know how to size the height of this element. So you must also include a size constraint. Um, so in all cases, you have to provide Xcode with enough rules to follow in order for it to determine both the position and also the height and the width. Um, so whereas in our example, we split up the screen into three portions, essentially. Um, so we had the top container, we had the middle container, we had the bottom container. And this allows us to have these designs to be centered in their individual containers. Um, of course, this is where we don't want the, the central design to change in size. Whereas if we did, we would, of course, just pin it to all four sides of the parent container. Um, and then in this case, it would scale up when the screen size is changed. However, because we realized that we wanted it to look good for landscape as well as um, portrait, um, if you think about this case where you've got a landscape um, version of the Dice app, then the containers become stretched like this. And if you are setting the, um, the pin to edge constraints, then your roll button would be stretched horizontally like this and your logo would also become disproportioned. So that's why we've kept it with the um, align and um, so we use the align to center and also the size and the width. I hope that makes uh, constraints a little bit more um, understandable for you. If you have any more questions um, about auto layout or constraints, then please feel free to comment in the box below and I'll do my best to um, answer your questions. And once again, thanks for watching our series. Um, and in the next episode, we're going to start linking up the designs in the interface builder to our code base. And we're going to show you how Xcode writes code automatically for you. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for the next video, uh, which will cover these topics. And in the meantime, please remember to subscribe and we will see you in the next lesson. That's...